Today's American Story with Bob Dotson comes from Montgomery, Alabama today, where one family has managed to make school work seem like play, and the results are amazing. Seth Harding brings light to the Dark Ages. Try to block with the base of your sword. At seven, when most kids figure they might be firemen, Seth announced he would be a military archaeologist. Oh, here's his chain mail. Mom, Mona Lisa, encouraged that curiosity. By 12, Seth was hanging out with students nearly twice his age, studying the Middle Ages at Faulkner University. How's he doing? He's got the highest average in the class. <laughs> Suppose that X minus y Seth was motivated by his brother Keith's success. Keith is just down the hall, studying finite math, a college senior at 14. It kind of makes you wonder if uh, they're advanced or we're just really behind. <laughs> Sister Hannah was the first of the Hardy kids to take college entrance exams at age 12. I didn't expect to pass, so I started crying <laughs> because I was thinking, now what? By 22, she was designing spacecraft, holds a master's degree in math and mechanical engineering. Take the difference. Positive five. 10-year-old Katrina Harding hopes to enter college next year. Her brother Heath started at 11. He's finishing his master's in computer science at 17. If they're going to be working at my kitchen table, why not earn college credit for what they're doing? Mona Lisa teaches them the basics. W-H is but found that her kids learned more quickly and got less bored when they were allowed to study deeply something they loved. I don't have any brilliant children. I'm not brilliant. My husband's not brilliant. Ah, oh, you got it. We're just average folks. Who inspired six children to enter college before they became teenagers. Kip didn't take his own advice. He was 25 before he graduated from college while flying helicopters in the military. Mona Lisa studied to be a nurse before staying home to teach the kids. They were high school sweethearts with a passion for learning. The expectation is that you're going to have a fun day, not you're going to come home with A's. Oh, nice throw, Seth. Each of their kids has a different passion. Keith loves music. Rosanna became an architect. And Thunder James? Who are we missing? Thunder is the last of their ten kids. I can understand maybe convincing one, two children to do this. By the time you get down to number five, number six, they just think that's normal. I have a test today. The younger children live at home, not college dorms. You don't drop them off at school, 16 credit hours, first semester, buy, I'll see you at four o'clock. These are not itty bitty adults. They play with kids their own age. But don't wait until they're older to figure out what they love in life. What concerns you about pushing kids too hard, too fast? All our kids would have to do is tell us. You know, I don't, this isn't fun anymore. Take big deep breaths. This is what daughter Serena tells her family. I hope to love them back very well with what I do with my life. Serena Harding, like her dad, chose the military. She's about to become a Navy doctor at age 22. One breath. of the youngest doctors in American history. For today, Bob Dotson, NBC News, with an American story in Montgomery, Alabama. Yeah, it was, it was more so that every year in school when she started public school, she basically was not challenged enough. So they promoted her pretty much every, every and, year. And did you know when you started at, back then, did you start and think, oh, give me something? I was always bored in school. I, I always felt like I wanted a challenge. I wanted something to be hard for me that I had to figure out. So I was constantly just coping with, with whatever they gave me because of how easy it was for me. I, I flew by it, really. I mean, uh, I just really wanted a good, a good challenge. So at what age did you pull her out of school? Eight, eight. At eight? Uh, yes, at eight. But by wow. this time, eight years old, she was in ninth grade.
sitting in, in, with high school kids. Literally in a ninth grade yes, classroom. in a ninth grade class with her little legs dangling that didn't reach the ground and it broke my heart. I'm like, this is, just doesn't seem right. <laughs> How did it seem to you? Um, for me, it was so normal because I never, I don't know anything else. I mean, here's an eight-year-old girl, I mean, going in with freshman students. I didn't know anything else. So I thought it was normal. I thought that was, you know, what happened. So, <laughs> so are you aware in life, like right now sitting across from me, that odds are you're smarter than me already <laughs> at 13 <laughs> than I ever will be? Do you go through life looking as a 13-year-old going, you know, um, I can handle you, sir. Whatever it is you're going to ask me, I can handle that. Well, I, I, my theory on learning and education is that knowledge is knowing what you don't know and that you never know enough, that you always go through life learning constantly, no matter what it is. Damn. So Knowledge, <laughs> keep going, is what don't know. Got it. So, so you're at home. You're not unschooled. You're homeschooling. Right? Yes, but it's also in traditional homeschooling in the sense that I don't want to take credit for her homeschooling because I was probably about 25%. She had private teachers come to the house. Um, well, yeah, you have to. Yes, because she's oh, clearly... definitely. Uh, there's no way, no way so, I could do this. <laughs> no, no, no. And one thing yeah. I, I was reading is that you guys make decisions together. Mm -hmm. We have. It goes three it's ways. It's a three way because it basically my family is myself, my mom, my dad, and my pet cat. But cats can't speak. So, um, so whenever we had to make a decision, it would always be through the three of us. I mean, we never left each other out, and we always made sure that the three of us were comfortable with every decision we made. So it was a good, it was a good balance. So what, what do you do when at thirteen? What, so what if at eight? You were in ninth grade. What level are you studying at now? Um, I just graduated high school in May. Um, uh, now, do you, you do that through homeschooling? So do you have a ceremony you get to do? Or? Yes, we, we do. But she graduated from Texas, and we had just moved to Burbank, to California. So she missed having a, a ceremony. So we took her to dinner. Uh, <laughs> we didn't know anybody here, so um, she's very humble. She just said to me that day, I said, let's go celebrate. She said, what for? It's not a big deal. I said, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Um, <laughs> but I want to point out that not only did she graduate, she graduated with 19 credits over required Texas law yeah so she really could have graduated so, probably at 10 maybe or something so uh, when we come back i have a question well most people would expect a 13 year old boy to be out playing or focused on activities but for one peoria boy his passion is advocating for social and environmental issues Andrew Ferris made a video to pay tribute to 9-11, but he also gets the word out about other problems using headphones and a computer. Ferris has made short videos about everything from global warming to veterans to radioactive waste. He says usually he'll hear a song and the idea will come to him for his next project. Ferris says he loves being creative in his editing and song choice, but his main goal is awareness. People don't actually realize the issues, and me being 13, it will actually impact people more that I actually think about these things, and it might make them think about these things, too. I mean, there's many problems that people just don't know about, and I'm trying to address them. All of Ferris's videos are posted on a YouTube channel, and for a link to check out...